Lauren Bober is running away like a scared little bunny rabbit from a very tough dis uh, race in a purple district to go. She, she, she's abandoning us to a Democrat because she can't take the heat. Hey everyone, I'm Gabe Sanchez and welcome back to another episode of What Was That? After a year plagued with public scandals, embarrassing moments, and political outspending, Representative Lauren Boebert is officially ditching her constituents and responsibilities for a new district. And her constituents are pissed off. Coward. Lauren Boebert's announcement feels like musical chairs, but instead of chairs, it's congressional districts. And instead of music, it's the annoying sound of Boebert's voice. As soon as I heard that Boebert was switching districts, my first thought was, wait, I didn't know Beetlejuice the Musical was touring in Colorado's 4th District. Nice f***ing model! So why exactly is Boebert jumping districts like she's playing Frogger? Well, lucky for us, she made a video to explain her pathetic excuse. Today, I am announcing my candidacy for the 2024 Republican nomination to represent Colorado's 4th Congressional District in the United States House of Representatives. It's the right move for me personally, and it's the right decision for those who support our conservative movement. This is the right move for Colorado, for us. 30 seconds in and Boebert is already trying to spin that she's not a weak coward abandoning her constituents like Ted Cruz during a freezing snowstorm with a broken power grid. Even her Republican constituents are pissed off, calling her a coward, a sellout, and a carpetbagger. Lauren Boebert is running away like a scared little bunny rabbit from a very tough dis uh, race in a purple district to go, she, she, she's abandoning us to a Democrat because she can't take the heat. So now she's gonna go run in one of the most conservative districts in the nation, not just Colorado, like the whole country. This is what, this is a deep, deep red district here. A Democrat has virtually no chance of winning. What are you doing here? Get your ass back home and defeat Adam Frisch, you sellout. Why would you abandon your district to a Democrat and then go run in a district where a Democrat has no chance of winning? That doesn't make any sense. That does nothing to protect our majority in the House. That's nonsense. I am so mad at These are the actions of a grifter whose primary concern is to get herself reelected. You know, frankly, I think it's because she doesn't want to be broke. She lost her restaurant and divorced her husband. And, you know, I'm not sure if she has any source of income outside her congressional salary. So that's what it's all about. She's just trying to save her job. She thinks she's so popular. She, she's entitled to just, just keep collecting your taxpayer money. So instead of running for re-election in the third district, or better yet, just resigning altogether, Boebert is packing her bags for the fourth district because she knows she's gonna lose in 2024. Boebert barely won during the 2022 midterms against Democratic candidate Adam Frisch with just 546 votes in the third district. And now she's incredibly afraid of Frisch, who's been raking in jaw-dropping amounts of campaign cash. I mean, according to the FEC, Frisch's campaign has raised over $7.7 .7 million so far. <laughs> Boebert was also facing a substantial primary challenge from the Republican attorney Jeff Hurd, who has already racked up endorsements from Colorado GOP brokers, including former Governor Bill Owens. There is no other way to put it. Boebert was facing a brutal and very expensive re-election fight in 2024, so her only plan was to tuck tail and run away to Ken Buck's old seat in the 4th District. Now, the 3rd District leans 9 percentage points in Republicans' favor, while the 4th District leans 27 points toward the GOP. So technically, it's a safe GOP seat, but Boebert's already running in a crowded primary with other MAGA QAnon crazies. Trent Lisey, Republican running to replace Congressman Ken Buck, says the Colorado Supreme Court justices who took down Donald Trump off the ballot should be arrested and tried for treason, which is punishable by death. Lisey is planning a rally this weekend alongside conservative activist Joel Altman, who has called for the mass executions of elected officials, journalists, and others. The um, adequate response for treason is 100% being hung by your neck till you're dead. I don't even care if you're two inches off the ground as long as you can't breathe and you're a traitor to our nation. I, I said it, sorry. Sorry, vengeance is God's, but consequences belong to us. NBC News reports the FBI is now involved in investigating threats against Colorado Supreme Court justices. Lisey and Oltman will be joined at the weekend rally by Tig Tigan, 
founder of the armed group United American Defense Force, who called the justices tyrannical dictators, using a hashtag that refers to the deaths of tyrants. Tigan has used similar language for FBI officials in Colorado, who he warned last month, your blood will be shed, and saying that traitors at the FBI can hang. It's not fundamentally flawed to talk about hanging tre treason, treasonous traitors. It's not. What it is, is it's a fact. The head of Colorado's Republican Party has recently said that civil war is coming if Trump is removed from the ballot or if so-called election fraud continues. And Chairman Dave Williams specifically said that the Republican voters who won their lawsuit against Trump are being treasonous. And this is this is treasonous what they're doing. And Again, we won't take it lying down. These MAGA extremists who refuse to accept the results of the 2020 election and will not condemn the violence of the Jan 6 attack are the very reason that Ken Buck is not seeking re-election. Since the first day I ran for public office, I promised I would do whatever it takes to stop the socialists and communists from taking over our country. What the hell is she talking about? Bobert can't even define communists or socialists, let alone spell them. I mean, Bobert can't even spell the word impeach correctly. This idiot made her whole personality about impeaching President Biden, and then she sends out a press release with a graphic that says, Impeach Biden. I-M-P-E-A-C-H. It is seven letters. What is so hard about that? Also, the GOP needs to come up with a better strategy than demonizing Democrats as some socialist or communist boogeyman, especially since Republicans happily accept government money and then take credit for successful programs after they voted against it. <coughs> Excuse me, Inflation Reduction Act. That means staying in the fight, but it also means not allowing Hollywood elites and progressive money groups to buy the third district, a seat that they have no business owning. So let me get this straight. Bobert is staying in the fight and not allowing Hollywood elites to own Colorado's third district by ditching it to represent the fourth district? Bobert has said a lot of dumb things in her life, but this one might take the cake. Seriously, can someone explain how her MAGA logic makes any sense? I will not allow dark money that is directed at destroying me personally to steal this seat. If Bobert is gonna be upset with anyone for destroying her, then she doesn't have to look any further than the fake glass is on her face. Her opponents just have to wait for her to reach out and give someone a helping hand. Job. It's not fair to the third district and the conservatives there who have fought so hard for our victories, of which I'm incredibly grateful. She's right. It's not fair to the people of Colorado's third district, but not for the reason that she thinks. It's not fair that they've had to deal with her idiocy and failures over the last two years. Oh, and when Bobert does vote, she'll claim it as a no-show protest when really she tried to make the vote but missed it like the debt limit vote in June. No excuses, I was ticked off. They wouldn't let me do my job, so I didn't take the vote. No, they just closed it. They closed it? Yeah. Lauren Boebert has zero victories and she's been betting against America ever since she first entered Congress. She voted against helping veterans, tried to defund the Department of Education, and she also voted against Biden's Inflation Reduction Act, something she called a massive failure. Which is hilarious when you realize that CS Wind, a wind turbine manufacturing plant in Pueblo, Colorado, added hundreds of jobs thanks to Biden's Inflation Reduction Act. And coincidentally, CS Wind is Congresswoman Lauren Boebert, you know that very quiet Republican lady. It's in her district, who, along with every other Republican, voted against this bill. And it's making all this possible. And she railed against its passage. But that's okay, she's welcoming it now. And it's now the largest wind turbine tower manufacturer in the world. Awkward. <laughs> But don't get too mad at Bobert. She thinks that wind turbines aren't really green energy because they can't reproduce themselves. Yes, she really said that. No, no, no. I want to learn how that's um, actually green energy because they can never reproduce themselves. A wind turbine <laughs> could never reproduce itself. Let's get back to Bobert's announcement and see what else she lies about. This announcement is a fresh start following a pretty difficult year for me and my family. Oh, Bobert is just looking for a fresh start, y'all. A clean break from the countless 911 calls, her son becoming a teenage father, her alleged fares with other men, her messy divorce, and of course, Gropergate. You know, when she was caught red-handed, juicing a man's beetle at Beetlejuice the Musical? Bobert was kicked out of Beetlejuice after she vaped in front of a pregnant woman who asked her to stop, took selfies during the musical, jerked off some guy while she got her breast squeezed in front of children, and yelled and gave the middle finger to innocent theater staff. And then she refused to apologize, said she didn't remember, issued a fake apology, and then blamed it on the cameras. You were so enthralled by Beetlejuice, you got carried away. A little bit. You know, Jesse, it's been 20 years um, since I was in the dating scene, and back then there were not infrared cameras um, watching my every move. Bobert only apologized because she was sorry that she got caught, 
not because she's sorry for what she did. Like I said earlier, the only person destroying Lauren Boebert is Lauren Boebert. At any point, Boebert can resign and live a quiet life, but she is choosing to put herself and her family in the public spotlight. So before she leaves the third district and loses in the fourth district, I thought I'd put together some highlights to remember her by. Boebert is never prepared on the house floor. Uh, amendment. Um, it decreases the salary of the deputy, uh, deputy under secretary of the food and nutrition services. And um, Madam Chair, I would like to reserve for the time being. Madam Chair, one moment. My apologies, I do not have amendment number 77 in front of me. Um, but Madam Chair, I do urge adoption of amendment 77 to be um, considered to decrease the salary of um, the deputy secretary. The, the deputy secretary. Maybe next time she'll check his pockets. I mean, uh, her pockets. Bobert also doesn't read the bills that she's voting against. But what you've said is none of the funds in this bill can be spent for that objective. And that is precautionary. What, what, I want what to... funds are in this bill to be sp spent for that objective? I, I have seen this administration use all sorts of funds no, to protect you. illegal aliens. Re re and this reclaiming is my time, Ms. to ensure that it will not be. Reclaiming my time, there are no funds in this bill to do that. So this is a, just an opportunity for you to stand and perhaps speak about an important subject. I understand that, but there are no funds in this bill to accomplish that objective. Um, you don't believe the chairman would put funds in to accomplish that objective, do you? Bobert struggles with basic math skills, which is also a problem with the GOP. You all are allowing delinquent employees to sit on their sofas at home instead of actually getting to work and doing their jobs. Uh, this is absolutely unacceptable. So our employees are working whether they are in the office or at home and they are Are you monitoring the work that they are doing from home on a regular basis? Yes, we are. Uh, every every employee do you have do you have the numbers of the hours that are submitted are, are you counting how many times they're logging into their computers and responding to casework? So our employees are subject to the same performance management processes and oversight they are, whether they're teleworking or working in an office. And we have systems in place that our managers use to schedule, assign, and track workloads. And that includes individual employee workloads in many cases. So real-time understanding of what actions are being processed at any particular given time. Additionally, our employees are required to be accessible to their supervisors, clients, colleagues and external parties during work hours via a variety of means, including instant messaging, video platforms, and telephone. They are connected to the workplace, whether they are in the office or at the home. Th then why is the backlogs for Social Security applicants increased from 41,000 to 107,000? Because we've been historically underfunded for a number of years now. I don't we think are you're underfunded. You're, you're funded at the Nancy Pelosi levels. At the Democrat levels, we just continued that same funding. So I would say at we, pandemic level spending. So I'd say we have an increase of over eight million beneficiaries over the last ten years. At the same time, we experienced our lowest work staffing levels at the end of FY22. That's a math problem. I mean, that is a problem. If you have those workloads, you know, increasing, and you don't have the staff to take care of those workloads, you're going to have the backlogs that you're talking about, Representative. Though her issues with math actually make a lot of sense when you remember that she's trying to defund the Department of Education and also allegedly failed the GED multiple times. Bobert also thinks that it's cheaper to have a kid than paying for birth control. I left a prescription at a pharmacy once. Um, I went to get um, birth control and um, I was there at the counter and went to pay for it and um, the, the price was very, very high. I said, wow, is this a three, six month prescription? No ma'am, this is one month. And I said, it's cheaper to have a kid. And I left it there, and now I have my third son, Caden Bobert. I mean, come on, is it too much to ask to have politicians take an exam before they get elected and take office? And I don't know if it's because Bobert has a particular interest in men exposing their genitals in public or what, but she is really obsessed with public urination. Yes, Mr. Allen, did you or did you not decriminalize public urination in no, Washington, D.C.? Did, did you lead the charge to do so? No, it, the revised criminal code left that as a criminal charge. Did you lead the charge to decriminalize public urination in Washington, D.C.? No, ma'am. Did the you ever vote in favor of decriminalizing public urination in Washington, D.C.? The revised criminal code that was did passed you by the ever council support, kept it as a criminal offense. Did you, did, and you support this? Criminal, 
I voted for it, yeah. Lauren Boebert is her own worst enemy, and she alone is the cause of all her problems. And based on what I've read and seen about how much the people of Colorado's 3rd Congressional District hate Lauren Boebert, let's join them in saying... Bye, Felicia. Well, that's all for me today. Thanks so much for watching, and feel free to follow me at I am Gabe Sanchez. If you like today's episode and want to support me and the work that I do, you can join my personal Patreon and pick your tier to unlock exclusive content and perks not available to the public. You can subscribe today at patreon.com slash I am Gabe Sanchez. So until next time, I'm Gabe Sanchez, and this has been What Was That? <laughs>